Oh dear, we're in quite a lot of trouble, it turns out. Here's a list of countries compared to which Britain is set to do worse economically in the coming year, according to the latest projections by the International Monetary Fund. Japan, Canada, the United States, France, Italy, Germany. I, I say worse than, all of these countries are set to grow to some degree. Admittedly, Germany only just by 0.1%. The US is on 1.4%, Japan nearly 2%. Of all these countries, only Britain faces economic decline, shrinking by 0.6%. It gets worse. So much worse. Britain is set to do worse than Russia. Russia. Now, Russia's actually set to grow this year. I mean, it's weak, measly growth, but it's still growing, which is literally better than us. Russia's invaded its neighbour. It's in a massive, catastrophic war, which it itself, of course, is entirely responsible for and has been subjected to massive economic sanctions. And Russia, Russia, just to underline, is set to do better than us economically in the coming year. It gets worse than that. You're probably thinking, could it possibly get worse than that? Well, it just does, to put it in perspective. Some other countries were doing worse than Italy, Spain, South Africa, Mexico, Nigeria, by actually a pretty big margin, to be honest, and also China, who are way ahead. Now, this is bad. It's, it's actually impressively bad. Like, a, a considerable amount of effort has been put into making this as disastrous as it clearly is. Now, maybe you think, well, maybe it'll pick up in 2024. You know, sometimes you, well, you often get a big rebound after that sort of contraction. Doesn't look like it, guys. In 2024, we're projected to have 0.9% growth, which would be the joint worst performance of the major economy. So those other economies will have growth in this year, and then the year after that, they'll have significantly more growth than us again. So what we're talking about here is epic decline compared to other countries. We're shrinking, uh, obviously, this year. Our living standards have gone through the worst squeeze since records began for many, many, many generations. To put this in a bit of perspective, let's listen to Ed Conway, the economics correspondent at Sky News. It's grim. I mean, it's really grim. And actually kind of worse worse than I would have expected. I mean, everyone knew that we we're in a sticky position at the moment. But basically, every other country or most other major countries around the world just got upgraded. So, so actually, you know, if you take a step back, uh, the news is quite good. Things are looking a bit better across the world. You've got more growth going on. Inflation looks like it's peaked. The problem is the UK is kind of an outlier here and the IMF has cut our growth forecasts significantly, quite a lot actually, down by 0.9 percentage points. So we are now basically the only economy in the world, certainly the only major economy, which is facing what looks like a recession. It's kind of staggering. And it's a problem for, you know, for, for the Treasury, leaving aside you know, the implications for, for the country as a whole. But for a long time, they've been saying, well, listen, most of the rest of the world's facing similar issues they to have, us. Yeah. You know, we're not an outlier. We're kind of middle of the pack. That's just been completely exploded by this. The UK looks terrible in comparison with other countries around the world. So a really critical point here. You can't just go, as the government keep doing, oh, look at the rest of the world, everyone's struggling, blah, 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 blah. This is a specifically British crisis. Now... You can't say, well, everyone's struggling, everyone's facing these, because it's true, there are external shocks. You get uh, the supply chain uh, shocks caused by the pandemic, which of course was a, the biggest crisis since World War II. It has its effects, of course it does. Russia invading Ukraine, again, energy price spike, that has, a co that has consequences. Everybody suffers as a consequence. The issue is, why is Britain of all those countries doing significantly worse than, say, Germany, which was more dependent on Russian energy than we are. That's the issue. So, obviously, there are external shocks, but why is it Britain, in particular, that is doing so much worse? Would you like to hear some desperation? Well, let's say I don't... Don't say I don't treat you. Here's a Tory politician offering just that. What is really sad about all this mm -hmm. is that if we talk ourselves into a recession, we will get a recession. If I had said to you, Joe, well, let's go out for a, a drink tonight, and you say, oh, no, the IMF said there's a recession coming, you can be sure there's going to be a recession in that pub tonight. Is that the it's response you get when you ask people out for a drink? They refer to the IMF <laughs> forecast. <laughs> well, um, you might. You might. <laughs> Most people say yes, Joe. I mean, if it was positive, it was more positive, would you believe the forecasts? 
Uh, not particularly, no. Okay. No, I just uh, don't believe what they say. Or, and also, I'm, I, I'm afraid I'll put the OBR in a similar camp as well. OK, that's the Office for Budget uh, Responsibility uh, set up by a Conservative government. Um, Kim? Mm, that is inundated with offers to go for drinks. He seems great. Now, you know that a political party, a government, is desperate when they start blaming economic crisis, not on their actual policies, given they're in charge of the actual economy and everything. Minor issue. But because of words said by people who aren't in power, which is the courageous argument made by that particular Tory. Now, there are lots of factors, let's talk about them, not least the decision of List Trust to implement a load of completely unhinged right-wing economic policies, based entirely on shoveling loads of cash to people who already have lots of cash, which they've been hoarding instead of investing over the last few years. Um, and as a consequence of those unhinged policies, she, of course, crashed the economy. Whoopsie-daisy. Well, let's not be too hard on her. Let those who have not crashed the economy with a bunch of deranged policies designed to favour the rich cast the first stone. Anyway, I bet she's showing some contrition, isn't she, after what she did. So we should be gentle on her. Let's have a listen to that contrition. Does today's IMF report reflect your economic plan, Miss Truss? Do you still think it's better than Rishi's? Are you responsible for the UK's forecast being worse than Russia's? Does Rishi lack integrity, Miss Truss? Would you have sacked Mr Zahawi, Miss Truss? I mean, it's not giving hugely apologetic, is it, if we're honest? But at least the British right, maybe if not Liz Truss, who's completely unapologetic and thinks that her policies were obviously superb, even if they went bam as they collided with the real world. But I bet the British right have learned their lessons, haven't they? I mean, take the Daily Mail. I mean, when, when, when Liz Truss turned us all into guinea pigs for her little experiment, the Daily Mail were jubilant. They were like, they, well, their headline was at least, at last, a true Tory budget. Absolutely cock a hoot, weren't they? When it all came tumbling down, there was a slight shift in tone on the part of the Daily Mail. In office, but not in power, when they spoke of her mere culpa for her errors. So what are they saying today, then, in response to the IMF report? Presumably they've learned some lessons from what they cheered on, because it wasn't that long ago. It wasn't like a few decades ago, it was just a few months ago. The headline is, why we have to cut taxes and go for growth. Do you not remember what happened? Do you not remember? It wasn't that long ago, guys. I mean, so just a little recap. I don't know how to keep saying this. The economy went into meltdown because the Tories did a load of unfunded tax cuts for rich people, which you cheered on. And now you're asking for the same thing to happen again. Do you not, do you not realise how ridiculous that is? Is there any sense that maybe that that's beyond absurd? Lots of people are suffering the consequences of what you cheered on. Oh, I don't even bother me. What's the point? Another fact is austerity, which succeeded in doing nothing other than, of course, suppressing economic growth, suppressing living standards, reducing tax revenues, trashing our public services, and making lots of people's quite difficult lives even more miserable than they were. So we've had years of economic stagnation before this, and obviously not a lack of investment in infrastructure and all the rest of it, which are things which are not good for growth. About a decade ago, the average Briton was as well off as the average German. We're now on average 15% poorer than our German counterparts. Brilliant. So obviously that's a major factor. And of course the other is we have to talk about is Boris Johnson's Brexit deal. Now that Brexit deal we were told would be oh, this utopia of growth and all the rest of it and Britain would be, you know, the kind of all the constraints on its growth and all the rest of it, the EU red tape, that would all be taken away and Britain will just be this big bounding tiger going and just roaring growth everywhere. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened. And in fact, in the Telegraph, which was very supportive of Boris Johnson's Brexit deal and his government, they're reporting that the Brexit deal is costing the economy £100 billion a year. It's meant that business investment has grown 19% below the level of other major economies. It's not great, is it, lads? Not great over and over, over the kind of looking at the round. They really have messed things up quite badly, quite really quite spectacularly. No peacetime British government in our democratic history has inflicted such terrible, catastrophic policies. I'm including Thatcherism. Because people might go, well, I mean, look, Thatcher's a paved, <laughs> paved way for a lot of this. It caused mass unemployment, deindustrialization, all the rest of it. You didn't have the same decline in living standards or the same measly growth. 
Um, the, you had the same economic growth in the 1980s as the much demonized 1970s. It was less equitably distributed. But ever since then, we've got each decade lower growth or, or you know, very weak growth by historical standards. But this government, in terms of just self-inflicted disaster after disaster, from austerity to the former Brexit, which they championed and implemented, nothing, nothing has been as catastrophic for this country. And this country is going down the swanee. It really is going to the dogs. Might as well adopt classic right-wing phraseology. Not because, as they would say it, because people are being, what they, what they say, political correctness or wokeness, because people are more accepting of difference but because of catastrophic economic and social policies which have ravaged this nation and for which we will be paying, I'm afraid to say, for many, many generations to come. Lovely cheery little sign off for you there. Don't worry, we'll get our vengeance eventually. Please like, subscribe, do support us on patreon.com forward slash ownjoes84 to keep offering an alternative to our rabid right-wing media. And I will see you soon.